Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to Sully's Models. So, um, as if you've been following us, um, you'll know that I've been working on uh, GR Tornado um, from Ravel in 32nd. Um, that's been put on the back burner for a little bit, uh, mainly because um, this kit in particular actually takes more priority uh, than the Tornado. Um, so this is going to be the Spitfire Mark 9 uh, C. It's the late version from Eddard's um, in their pro profile pack range. Um, uh, the re this would technically should have been the kit I was doing next. Um, but because it was a part missing, I've had to wait uh, for that part to turn up. Uh, so I can actually make a start on the kit. Um, so this kit is actually... Um, for a customer, uh, so there's a reason why this has took uh, more presence over uh, the tornado. Um, I might try and do a little bit while I'm I'm, I'm working on this. Um, I do generally struggle to work with two kits at the same time, so it's usually one kit done, next kit. So, um, so yeah. So um, uh, where are we going? Uh, I don't know. I've lost the plot. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we'll we'll see what's in the kit and uh, then we'll make a start. Okay, so we'll have a, a quick look uh, through uh, the instructions. Um, Eddard's instructions are very nice, uh, nicely done, laid out and very, very clear. Um, so your first page is uh, telling you, you know, sort of what sprue uh, parts uh, you've got. Highlights in blue are all the ones that you won't be using. Um, clear parts. Um, the kit also comes with a canopy mask and um, some brass, sorry, not brass, uh, photo etch uh, parts. <clears throat> um, these are the parts that I've been waiting for, so it's what's held me up um, starting it, uh, mainly because of the armor plating um, in the back. Uh, of the seat, so I needed to do them before I could actually really even get started. Um, so, as you can see, they're very nicely um, laid out and clear. Um, when you come to parts that, it, I mean, they are optional really, because it gives you an option, um, apart from the fact that you actually need the um, armor plate in the back of the seat anyway. So, uh, as you, if you've used brass parts before, you you'll know that um, or photo etch parts, um, that they're replacing plastic parts we're already in the kit. Um, in the case of this one, um, they're not present at all. Um, so you need, you kind of need some of these parts anyway, so it's a bit of a weird one. Um, <clears throat> but um, it will tell you where, if you need them. As you see there, you'll have uh, PE, which is photo etch 21 part number. Um, you know, so you know where and um, what bits you want. Um, also even gives you the colour coding. It's their colour coding, so if, unless you know it, um, I don't, so it gets a bit confusing. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but yeah, um, really nicely laid out, um, really clear, not cluttered at all. Um, so yeah, um, most, most of the work on this, I've tend to form with spits anyway, is the majority of it is in the cockpit as you can see the cockpit um ends up in sort of a, a tub section on its own that you'll you know you sort of squeeze in between uh, the fuselage <clears throat> um but yeah um really really nice bold you know not, not very much struggle um to, to follow <clears throat> obviously tells you the parts there as well um for your canopy masking uh, there, uh, I will mention actually is the fact that um, for the canopy masking, um, as opposed to the main bubble canopy, it has actually only got the sort of um, outer of the panel. Um, so you'll need to fill in uh, the center of the canopy either with more masking tape or which I'll use um, some um, liquid mask. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, so, um, when you get to the markings, which none of these I'll be using, because uh, the customer doesn't want any of these ones, there's a specific one he's after, um, which I'll pop up now. 
Uh, but we've got uh, five markings uh, to choose from, some quite nice ones um, as well. <clears throat> um, one very different scheme compared to all the others, um, which is pretty much all sort of silver or uh, alumin uh, flat aluminium uh, with a camo, uh, camo nose. And the last two markings there as well. Um, <clears throat> at the end, you'll have um, all your sort of uh, standardized markings that will go on a Spitfire. So walkway markings, trestle uh, positioning, uh, stencils for, um, you know, like engine start or your fuel caps and, and whatnot. Um, there, so, um, yep, that also actually suggests also you personally probably doing that first before doing your main markings. <clears throat> so we'll have a look at the main kit itself. The detail on this is absolutely fantastic. Um, all the rivets that are supposed to be there are there and all in the right places. Um, reminds me very much of the uh, 130 seconds Revell Spitfire I've done uh, fairly recently, which is, has, for an old kit, has got the same level of detail on it. Um, you know, this is you know, really nice. Uh, really nicely done there. <clears throat> uh, main fuse lines again, very nicely um, detailed. Again, all the rivet lines in the right places. The only thing I'm going to find I'm always already a bit annoyed with really is the fact that the canop uh, canopy, the uh, engine cowl, top cowl, is in two parts. So that's going to be a seam line we've got to try and get rid of um, and potentially lose some of that detail. That's going to have to try to be put back in um, afterwards as well. Same with the chin uh, cowl there. For some reason, the later ones, and I've noticed this with other kits, they do the later ones in two parts, but the standard one in one singular one. I'm sure by now they should be able to do it as one part, but there we go. Um, <clears throat> I'll show you one of the sprue parts, main sprue. Um, Elevators and tail plane are one singular piece uh, and detailed very nicely. Again, wing tips again as well, one piece. It's only really the um, uh, tail plane and uh, tail uh, that are in uh, two parts. Elevators, Christ, ailerons even, uh, are also in one part. And I'll show you a little bit there of the uh, main. Uh, sidewall uh, of the cockpit again which is uh, very well detailed um, in there as well. Uh, clear parts are on this circular sprue uh, which is quite nice because uh, I think these are a lot easier um, to take off and clean up as well. Um, <clears throat> same with the rest of the main uh, sprues and this one you probably might have noticed that there's next to no flashing whatsoever. So particularly with the clear parts, it's great. Um, so they're gonna be nicely easily uh, taken off and cleaned off from where they're mounted onto the sprue. And then very quickly, I will show you uh, the um, photo etch parts, which says before, it's got the um, main control on plates, even uh, the seat belts, which is always uh, a nice, um, added extra to put into your uh, kits is where normally these you know you don't you don't usually get them if you're lucky you'll get a decal um, which obviously is not you know quite the same um, but there we go so uh, yep yeah, we'll get into it and we'll make a start on that cockpit so the cockpit walls were nice quick uh, simple and easy uh, to put together uh, so we set about um, uh, drilling out all the flash holes um, in the framing that will hold uh, the seat together uh, using a bit of glue to uh, clear away some of that extra flashing um, and, and rubbish after drilling. Uh, and then we move along to sort of starting to uh, put the seat together. So we've got the back frame uh, going in. Then uh, there's the armor plate in the sits just at the back of the pilot's head, which is super glued in uh, with some of those nice uh, photo wedge parts.
for some reason, I decided to put a couple of the uh, comrades in uh, for the uh, rudder. Uh, knowing full well, uh, you're not going to see these. Uh, but sometimes it's nice to put these little de details in using a little bit of uh, steel wire. Going back to the uh, inner walls, um, I decided to put a few more uh, extra details in there. Uh, so we've put in, uh, you know, uh, quite a lot of wiring um, in there just to just to add a little bit more detail to it. Right, so I've left this next part in uh, real time just to show you how quick um, burnishing fluid can work and it's great for uh, some of the photo wedge parts because uh, it, it roughens it up and it gives it a really nice basis uh, for your primer uh, to, to stay on to because sometimes, um, you know, brass parts and, and photo wedge parts, sometimes, you know, when you're working it later on doing a bit of weathering, sometimes it comes away. Um, there are other products for, um, you know, uh, photo etch parts, but I had this small amount of burnishing fluid left over for some tank tracks, uh, and I thought it'd be a good idea to, uh, you know, to rough this up for our base primer. But as you can see there, and how quickly um, this stuff uh, reacts. Um, afterwards, um, I'll dampen it off a little bit and uh, sort of give it a quick wash with a bit of tap water, and that takes any of the residue any excess residue off uh, from the burnishing fluid and also stops it um, from continually um, you know, eating away um, at the material. Uh, so there you go. Uh, looks a bit rough, uh, but um, you know, it, it's gonna give, it give us a great basis for our primer. And then that's all that's left to do with a little bit of super duper glue, um, just stick it to that back uh, bit of armor plating. And then that's all that's
So when you look at a lot of the wiring uh, inside a cockpit, a lot of the time it's sort of uh, strapped down uh, to the side walls or uh, the framework uh, in there. And I find uh, sort of the easiest way, even though it's the most probably one of the most fiddliest ways of doing it, is quite usually just using a little bit of masking tape and just plonk it down after a long, as you'll see here, a bit of fiddling uh, to try and get it into place. Um, afterwards, just use a little bit of super glue um, over those and that should stay there forever and a day. One of the nice things about this kit, um, and part of the reason why I chose uh, this kit for the customer, is because there's a lot of nice little details uh, that go in there. As you can see there, the little um, uh, safety release handle at the back of the um, you know, control column. So before the control panel goes in, um, because that's another uh, photo edge part, uh, we'll get it all uh, painted uh, and uh, ready for those parts to go in. Also a quick bit of weathering, um, as you can see using a silver pencil um, gives you a lot easier um, flexibility rather than using paint to you know, put in those uh, scratching, uh, particularly in that bottom part of the uh, seat. The last two parts of Photo Edge is the uh, face for the compass uh, and then we'll be putting in the uh, instrument panel. So this is the last part of uh, the weathering uh, for the cockpit um, using some uh, accent liner uh, from Tamiya. Uh, it's great, stuff's great. It fills into those uh, you know, crevices and, and you know, what other details that you've got going on uh, in there. And then with uh, just a little bit of white spirits, um, you know, wipe away the excess. And also when you're sort of rubbing that around, um, also gives you a little bit more of a dirty look so um, you know comes out quite nicely
So this is the last bit to go in the cockpit, is the uh, seat harness. Um, always a good thing to do with uh, photo etch parts when cutting them out, obviously using a very nice uh, sharp blade, but also a very hard uh, flat surface to cut these out on. Sometimes if you're cutting them on like cutting mats because they're kind of a little bit spongy, um, you know, you could, when you press down on the parts, they, they kind of bend with it. So, um, you know, thick bit of plaster card or ceramic tile, just something, you know, nice and uh, solid um, for that to go with, uh, sorry, to cut that onto. And then, as you can see, you know, we just super glue uh, the parts in there because these have got to be bended uh, a little bit into the seat to make them look a bit more uh, natural and relaxed. Uh, we'll super glue them in and uh, we'll, we'll let the super glue set first before we start manipulating those belts. So while I'm waiting for those parts to dry out, um, I move on to the main seat harness and glue those two parts together as well. This bit was a little bit fiddly trying to squeeze that uh, belt uh, through that little slip in the back of the armour plating and also getting the uh, bottom of that strap through another small hole uh, in the back of the seat. Uh, but again, um, you know, nice uh, little detail to go in uh, having these. I prefer these metal belts rather than the fabric ones because I feel you can manipulate them. Um, a lot more and if like in the case of this um, they sort of jut out a little bit so just dab a little bit of super glue behind there and that will you know, obviously glue them in place and then to make them look a bit older another bit of uh, accent panel liner uh, dark brown there just to make them look a bit older So there we go guys that's the cockpit all done and dusted i hope you enjoyed the video um, if you did please subscribe to the channel uh, for more stuff like this and upcoming videos but as always you can also follow us on facebook and instagram so again guys thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one